We're going to start off with getting into the very first step of the GTD core, uh, the GTD methodology, and that first step is one of capture. In capture, all we are doing here is we want to gather up all of life's random inputs and get them channeled into a relatively few and relatively small set of buckets that we can clarify and organize at a more appropriate time. The value that we get from doing capture, the biggest value that comes out of this is the value of clear space. It's clear space that allows us to be able to maintain our focus as well as generate energy to complete a task. Now with capture, there's actually three different forms of, of items that come into our life, uh, forms of meaningful inputs, and we can kind of group them into those three categories. The first of those categories is digital inputs. Now think in your life, what's the big digital input that comes flying into your life every day? What is that? Email, yes, uh, always tons of email. How many people get like 50 or more emails a day? Yes, yeah, a little overwhelming, isn't it? Uh, anyone get like 30 or less? Not many, but a few, right? Uh, still a lot to deal with depending on everything else that you have going on in your life. The good news about digital inputs is they automatically do what we want it to do. They, they, they gather themselves up and they collect into a relatively small bucket. In this case, all of your email, for example, can be found in your email inbox. So in terms of capturing, we're good. We'll deal with the rest of email when we get into clarify and organize. So let's talk about the second group, and that's our physical space. Our physical space is a lot more difficult to manage because there's so many different physical inputs that are potentially meaningful coming into your life. We have snail mail, we've got magazines, you've got, you got meeting notes, you've got project plans, you've got, you've got uh, folders and data that are going around. And all of those tend to land in the first available spot that presents itself. And, and how about those post-it notes? How, how many of you have post-it notes all over the place? Yeah, sure. Uh, those kind of gather up. Anyone have any decorating the face of your, of your monitor? Who's, who falls there? Yeah, thanks for the honesty. Appreciate that. Well, certainly uh, creating clear space in our physical world has tremendous value. And the way that we create physical clear space is just to simply gather up all of those elements that have come flying into our, into our, into our workspace and get it channeled into, say, an inbox that we have, just a, a smaller space that we will deal with. And then we've created some physical clear space. And that gives us the opportunity to move forward. I'll give you an example of where physical clear space uh, and the value of that clear space shows up in, in your personal life. Uh, and let's start here. It's any good cooks? Where are my good cooks in the room? So we have several good cooks. Let me ask my good cooks, before, uh, before you get ready to start on some new enticing recipe, something you've never done before but you really want to, uh, and so tonight's the night you're going you're gonna to go for it, what condition do you want your kitchen to be in? Clean, Clean organized, clear. clear, sure. You know, as a matter of fact, I have never met a good cook that wouldn't clean their kitchen right before they got ready to make a big mess in it. And it's that clear space that gives, you, that gives you the energy to pursue the project. Plus, it opens the doors for creativity for when that needs to show up in whatever project that you're trying to get done. So that's, the, that's an example of the value of clear space uh, in our physical world. Then there's the third group. And the third area is the one I consider to be the most important one of the bunch. And that is, is the things we capture in our head, the, the mental, psychological uh, inputs that we have. And it, here we need clear space, we need a clear mind. And the way that we get that clear mind is through a mind sweep. Now it's important to gather all those things and get them out um, because the more we hold in our head, the more frequently we find ourselves distracted by our own self. Uh, that mental chatter that's going on. David probably puts it best when he says that our mind is for uh, having ideas, not for holding them. Your brain is a, is a phenomenal creative engine, but it is a, it's a lousy storage place for uh, things to get done. 
So we capture all those things through a mind sweep. In a mind sweep, all we're going to do is, I'm gonna, and I'm going to have you do one here in just a moment, you're going to just start writing whatever shows up in your head. Just write it down. And as soon as you write something down, your brain has a tendency to let go of that one, and a new one will come flying in. And then write it down and just keep going. And we'll eventually create some mental clear space. Now, while the name mind sweep might be new to you, the concept of a mind sweep probably isn't. How many of you would acknowledge that at some point there were things going on in your life, all kinds of things going on in your life, things started spiraling out of control, and the way that you dealt with that was to sit down and make some big list of everything that was going on. How many of you have done that? Yeah, virtually everybody has. Now, let me ask you the big question. How many of you felt better the moment you created that list? Who falls into that category? Yeah, pretty much everybody again. Here's what's important to recognize there. You have made no forward physical progress towards anything on that list, but you feel better. And if you'd reverse engineer that thinking, you'd never keep anything in your head again. You would always be capturing, getting stuff out of your head. So I'm going to have you do a mind sweep uh, with me right now. Uh, so if you would, if you'd turn to page three in your workbook, we'll get you started on this.